Hey guys, welcome back. It is now time for a read aloud and knowledge lesson. So I'm still dressed warm because it's kind of cold outside today. So it was beach day yesterday. Today was call uh, tell someone you love them day. And I've called a few members of my family. So <clears throat> I'll probably do some more afterwards. But I want to get to our reading. Um, yesterday we read about Charles Steinmetz, right? Um, do you remember where he came from? Remember what country he came from? He came from, I have this globe here. Okay, here's where we live, the United States, right? Which is all part of North America. Okay, across the Atlantic here. Across the Atlantic here, um, we have Europe, he's from Europe, he's from Germany. So that's like right above my finger here, Germany. That's kind of the area he came from. So a lot of people were coming from this Europe area across the Atlantic to North America during those times. Today we're seeing a lot of people come up. Um, so here's the United States, um, Mexico, a lot of people come from Mexico, people come from the Asian continent over this way across the Pacific to the United States as well. So we're seeing a lot of immigration from those areas. <clears throat> but during the turn of the century, um, going into the 20th century in the 1880s and that sort of thing, a lot of people came from Europe to the United States. So. Um, we're going to do our read aloud today. I'm going to go over some of our vocabulary for our read aloud. The first word, if you can see that, hopefully you can read that. Take your time. The word is customs. Customs. A customs are kind of a traditional way of doing things. Doing things. Um, a custom in the United States on Thanksgiving, we have turkey. And we have dinner with family. Some people watch football. Some people just get together and eat lots of turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and gravy and the, the cheesy beans, those kind of things, right? Those are customs or traditions, okay? They're just things we do. At Christmas time in the United States, we a lot of us put up trees and we exchange gifts. Um, some people, other religions, celebrate a holiday called Hanukkah. That would be Jewish. So different people have different customs in our country. Um, we're all many different cultures or many different kinds of uh, people here in the United States. That's why we talked about uh, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. So there's lots of different ways that people celebrate or observe their customs in, in one country of the United States. So the next word, you can read that. It almost looks like you would say hostile, but it's hostile, right? Hostile. If somebody is not very nice, they might be hostile toward you. So not showing kindness or showing aggression, that might be hostile. Um, another form of the word would be hostility, if somebody showed you hostility. Okay. Next word. This is a compound word. How about I cover part of it up? That word is new. And this one's a C. New come newcomers. So newcomers are people who come to a country and they're new here. Just like the word says, newcomers. And the last word, I kind of already used it when I was talking about customs because they're kind of related, but it's tra Tradition makes a sh sound tra traditional. <coughs> Excuse me. So if something is traditional, it's customary or long established, being done the same way all the time, right? If we have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, or um, a custom, or even a tradition on Halloween, is we go trick or treating, dress up in costumes. 
So traditional is, is an adjective. Okay. Customs are actually customs is a is a noun, right? It's a thing. But traditional would be an adjective in this one. So, so we're gonna move over here, get to our reading today. Okay, for the reading. I have this picture of a city because we're going to read about city life, city life. So much, you know, we read about the Oregon Trail and the journey there. They were on homesteads and that sort of thing um, before. But now we're going to talk about life in the city. So there's a cool picture of a city at night with some stars. And then when we're done, we'll do that sheet. So we're going to read about life in the city. Try to pull this a little bit closer. So you, hopefully you can see that. All right. Marie awoke to the sound of a voice outside her window calling. Buy my fresh fruit, good to eat. Crunchy apples, red and gold, sweet cherries, strawberries. Buy my fresh fruit. Good to eat. Then, like the different colored yarns her grandmother knitted together to make a scarf, the sounds of the city began to weave together one after another. First, Marie heard the clear ring of bells hanging around the necks of goats that provided milk to some of her neighbors' homes. Then... She heard a new creaking sound she knew belonged to Mr. Jacoby's wagon. He delivered cow's milk and cheese from his dairy across town. So here the girls, Marie is looking out the window and there's stuff going on. There's people with fruit down here, if you can see that. Okay, so people on the street selling stuff. Now Mr. Diplus, the jolly Greek man, started calling. Knife sharpener, knife sharpener, axes, scissors, shovels, picks, blades, and handles I can fix. Marie liked, liked the grinning little man. He was built as solidly as a bull as he walked the city streets pushing a cart that held his sharpening stone and tools. I wonder if it's that guy. He's put, looks like he's pushing a cart. So he probably sharpened stuff. So you got the guy selling fruit, the guy sharpening stuff. Look, people are hanging their clothes out on their lines. Some of us have clothes lines on our property. Some of us don't, but some of us still do. And in big cities, they didn't have like a yard that if they lived in an apartment or something, you wouldn't have a yard to hang their stuff in. So they would put them from building to building and hang stuff. Probably before everybody had washers and dryers. All right. Marie awakened. Her two younger sisters, who start, shared the bed with her, then crossed the little room in two steps to wake her baby brother, who was still small enough to sleep in an open drawer wooden dresser. Everybody up, she said. So look at this picture. If you have to share a room with your brother and sister, you know, that can sometimes be tough, but look at this. They had three people in one bed and a baby sleeping in the bottom dresser drawer. Hmm. They look happy, right? She's smiling. Marie's day was just beginning, but Papa would have already left in the dark hours before dawn for his job at a mattress factory. Mama would have to, Mama would have woken up with him to brew his coffee and cook his breakfast as he started down seven flights of wooden stairs. She would have handed him his metal lunch pail with the sandwich she had made for him. Huh. So this is, would have been the, the, the dad early in the morning. On his way to work, he's getting dressed. They have a candle. Instead of lights, they have a candle. Clothes are hanging and looks like she's got coffee or at least hot water. 
food for breakfast. Marie's, oops. Our new home is not like our quiet little village in Italy, Marie thought for the thousandth time as she helped her youngest sister and her brother get dressed. So many people here, so much noise, and Papa has to work so hard for so many hours every day that in that smoky factory. Still, she thought, at least Papa has a job. Back home, there were no jobs, very little to eat, and the floor in our little house was made of dirt. Here in America, there's plenty to eat. We live in a good building. I wish there were not so many people crowded in with us, though. I do like having so many friends, and I enjoy the city, but sometimes I would like it to be quiet. That way, the way it was in our little village in Italy. But I'm very thankful to be here in America, where there are so many opportunities. So how do you think Maria feels about her life in America after what I read? How do you think she feels? She probably, it sounds like she likes having friends, her new friends, and having lots of friends around and lots of people around. But at the same time, she kind of misses all those, misses how quiet it was before. And um, it sounds like she had more room and lives in a village versus now she lives in a crowded city. So there's some trade-offs. There's some things she really likes, some things that she doesn't like as much. Marie's life was typical of the lives of millions of immigrants who came from Europe and Asia to the United States for, a better, for better job opportunities in the 1800s and early 1900s. The largest wave or group of immigrants, 23 million people, came to the United States between 1880 and 1920. 23 million is a big number, isn't it? That's more people than live in the entire state of Florida today, okay? There's actually probably a million people that live in the state of Montana, okay? <clears throat> in the whole state. That's with Billings and Great Falls and Missoula and Kalispell and Bozeman, all those cities put together, there's about a million people in the state of Montana. Imagine 23 million people coming. Immigrants from Europe entered through Ellis Island and New York Harbor, and many stayed near the harbor living in, our, living in or around New York City on the East Coast. Other immigrants moved away from New York to join friends and relatives who were already living further north in Boston, south in Philadelphia, or west in the great cities of the Midwest, such as Chicago, Detroit, or Cleveland. And again, it looks like that picture of people coming in off the boat. Meanwhile, Chinese and other immigrants from Asia came to the west coast of the United States through the city of San Francisco, passing through the Angel, passing through the Angel Island Immigration Center in San Francisco Bay. Okay, I'm going to get some, show you some maps. So we talked about flipping you around. Here we have the East Coast, so we have New York. And they talked about Philadelphia, and Boston would be mm, 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 Massachusetts. Over here is Boston. Okay, and then they talked a little bit about the big cities. They moved further west to the big cities like Detroit and Chicago. Okay. And then people coming from, from Asia came over to the West Coast, which is the other side, and there's San Francisco over there by California. Okay, they came in that way. So coming into the United States, 23 million people.
There were fewer Asian immigrants, so the immigration center on Angel Island was not as large as the immigration center on Ellis Island in New York Harbor, but still, there was a steady stream of immigrants and these Chinese and other Asian immigrants settled in cities around the San Francisco Bay or moved inland from the ocean. They would often stop in the mining camps of the California mountains in search of gold, joining other gold seekers from across the United States and from other nations around the world. After finding no gold, many Chinese went to work building the railroads that would soon join the east and the west coast of the country. Do you guys remember when we read about that during the westward expansion, the railroad that they built across the country? And then when they met, what did they put in the ground there? Do you remember? A spike? A golden spike. Although many immigrants settled in the countryside as farmers or villagers, most of them made their homes in the big cities of America. What are some of the big cities we just talked about? We mentioned San Francisco, we mentioned New York, Detroit, Chicago, Boston, okay? Many immigrants settled in these in these large cities because there were more jobs there. Earlier immigrants remembered the hardships and difficulties they had experienced in settling in a new country and often, and often helped the newcomers to find jobs. City immigrants worked in factories, making everything from shirts and dresses to the, to the buttons and buckles that closed them, from small wooden picture frames to huge wooden railroad cars, from loaves of bakery bread to huge ovens, in which you need needed to do all that baking. Some own their own businesses, little shops and stores of produce, which is fruits and vegetables, to, or goods from their home countries. Others sold them from carts or wagons, which they pushed themselves or had horses to pull them. Wherever they came from and wherever they settled, the newcomers found other immigrants who had brought with them the customs, the foods, and the languages of their home countries. Many immigrants who lived in the cities gathered in ethnic neighborhoods with other immigrants from their native countries. People would say, that little, that's little Italy over there, or this neighborhood is called Chinatown. Germans, Polish, Italians, Irish, African Americans, European, Jewish, Japanese, Norwegians, and many other groups had what they thought of their their own parts of the town. They felt at home there. Cafes and restaurants served their traditional foods, which is kind of the foods that they were used to eating in their home country, okay, with old recipes. Crowded apartments were decorated with familiar items from home, and all around them they heard the languages of their homeland. So if a bunch of people from Italy live in the same place, a lot of people speak the Italian language, and then they can understand what's going on. So. They, they heard those familiar things. By living closer together, immigrants not only felt more at home, they also were able to support each other in finding jobs and learning English. Immigrants felt safer and more comfortable in these neighborhoods, but they would often have to travel outside their parts of town to work and live. Sometimes when they left their neighborhoods and met people from other places, they learned from one another and usually enjoyed it. Sometimes they met only unfriendliness or even hatred. Immigrants discovered that some people from outside their community could often be hostile or very unfriendly toward them because they were different. But some Americans believed that immigrants were coming to the country to take their jobs. However, difficult Difficult their new lives in America could be, the lives of many immigrants improved when they moved to and settled in the United States. The longer immigrant families lived in the United States, the less hostility they felt. Over time, children of immigrants felt even less hostility as did their children's children. And in time, they were accepted as Americans, just like everyone else.
Okay, in our read aloud, we heard about, we read a little bit about that girl named Marie. She was an immigrant, a girl, and she was from, do you remember? Italy. Okay, her village in Italy was much smaller than the city, so it was quieter. In Italy, though, there were no jobs, there was very little to eat, and her house had dirt floors. In the United States, they had plenty to eat, her father had a job, and they lived in an apartment building. So they're a little bit different, but there are some things that if you have opportunity and jobs and food, um, that's why they came to the United States. Um, what were some of the pull factors that attracted the Chinese immigrants to California, into the mountains? Do you remember? I mentioned it very quickly, usually gold, they would come in there and search for gold and sometimes didn't find it, but they came looking for gold, hoping to find wealth. Um, and what were some of the cities? Do you remember some of the cities we mentioned and talked about? Where I mentioned, I mentioned uh, a lot of people came in through New York Harbor at Ellis Island. Um, so in New York, some of the cities on the East Coast then that, that we mentioned were uh, cities like Philadelphia, like Boston, and then more in the Midwest, moving over west, we mentioned Detroit and Chicago. And then on the west coast, by the Pacific Ocean, uh, people came in mostly in through San Francisco and in the California area. So um, that's a little bit about our reading today. And we learned as, as they, they started to have families and the children had children and the children's children, they started to all accept each other. And that's kind of goes back to our E- Pluribus unum is out of many, one. They all became Americans. So we're going to keep reading a little bit about immigration um, tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I have something else for you. Just a break from the immigration. We're going to read about bees tomorrow. So here's another, um, looks like part of the United States. Um, the tip of it. Kind of where like Maine and New York. Like down here would be like the New York area. Okay, maybe this is a Great Lake. Um, so, but again, kind of what we've been doing is write a few sentences or write a sentence, a few sentences sharing facts that you learned about immigration today. So you can read in, write in here. I know there's no lines to write on, but just get, it, get them in there best you can. Um, and eventually we'll cut all these out and make a big map. A big kind of a puzzle. So, um, hope you're all well. Hope you enjoyed our reading today, and um, stay safe out there and stay healthy. Miss you guys. <laughs>